Well, if it won't come out of reverse, how the hell am I going to get it inside? You got me wondering why I've got these. Well, there's an interesting story about that, and it involves a 645 V8 with an SMG gearbox that's stranded in our yard. These are what I made to get the thing inside, so let's check it out, see if we can get it inside. <laughs> Well, the depths of winter now here and I've got a car that's been towed in and it's a 645 V8 with an SMG gearbox and they think the SMG gearbox has failed and I've no idea where it is Ah, there it is, I've just seen it So I've got to get it in tonight because I'm going to basically start this job tomorrow and if it's tasty enough, I'll do a video Oh God, here we start, here it starts, check this out Here we are Christ, it's absolutely windy Oh, another the wind. Oh God, it's freezing about minus seven. It's better than the minus 20 we had the other day. And here I am, vanilla magic tree smell. And uh, it's in reverse, that's not a good sign, is it? No, it's in buddy drive. Oh, it's buggered. It's completely buggered. Look, it's, uh, it's stuck in bloody reverse. It's stuck in reverse, damn. Ay, 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 that's not good, is it? So essentially, the vehicle is what seems to me to be stuck in bloody reverse gear. Which is... And the brake pedal is frozen. What seems to be frozen, anyway. Yeah, so nothing's happening, look. It's absolutely smashed. So this is going to be a dead interesting job. It won't even start, you see. Look, you've, you've no chance. It won't start at all. Right, so essentially what we've got here is what we've got is two bloody big, it's a barrel cut in half basically, it's quite big, but the wheels on this 645 are huge. And what I'm planning on doing is putting one on the left wheel, one on the right wheel, jack it up first of course, then this should then slide in the snow like this, those guys will push it because it's not four wheel drive, it's rear wheel drive only. And that should get us in the workshop, at which point we'll uh, swap over to the skates. We've got some skates but the skates can't be used outside because they're not really like heavy duty ones basically but we'll swap over to skates once we get the damn thing onto my lifter which can stay there all weekend then really and then we'll start to diagnose this shift sensor which has basically failed or the wiring or whatever and we'll see if we can get the damn thing out reverse right now though i'm gonna have to go and get my warm clothes on because it's uh, we're expecting minus 30 next week and it's already about minus 10 and it's very bad so Let's do that, get wrapped up so we don't get frozen and then uh, let's grab it. Well, there you are. I don't know if it's going to work, but if it does, it'll be great. It's stuck in reverse, and now we've got to get it in. Uh, no. Now I'm in the comfort of my own home, I'll just give you a quick idea of the reason why perhaps I didn't use Think2 or Autologic to force this thing into neutral. Well, I tried. And usually that was what that is what you would do. You would usually force it into neutral if it's sort of stuck in reverse or first or second or whatever. However, because we had a problem, as you'll find out now in the video with uh, the shift sensor, 
it couldn't recognise where neutral was. So uh, the result was it put it into neutral, but it ended with an error and it physically tried to put it into neutral, um, the, as in the test bond, put it into neutral, but in reality in the gearbox, it just remained in reverse. So I came up with something a little unusual, should we say, because the sensors are at the top of the gearbox and um, I knew straight away from the live data, which I'm going to go through shortly with you, that the sensor was completely goosed. So I came up with quite an ingenious method to actually force this thing into neutral, which I'm pretty sure you'll like. So let's take a look at that. Just thought I'd address that issue because if people are watching this, they'll say, why didn't you just use a, a tester and put it in neutral? Well, as you know, the sensor don't work. Don't know where neutral is. So there you are. That's why we had to invent those skids, which work very well, by the way. We'll keep them for next for next winter, for next next jobs that we have to push in that way. So let's carry on with the video. Well, a bit of a rudimentary diagram, but you get the idea. It's a three-wire hall effect sensor. So you have a five-volt supply from here, the SMG control unit. That goes direct to the sensor and a little mini harness, which I'm going to show you shortly on the gearbox. And then there's an output between one and five volts direct to the SMG unit, which will then translate that into a readable form, which we can view on ISTA as live data. And of course, uh, we have a ground at the bottom of the sensor to the chassis. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look at the live data. Then we're going to take a bit of a reading with the uh, Power Probe Maestro because it's nice and useful. And then we'll dive into this job and show you how to get it sorted. 7.5 volts on a 5 volt circuit. Something very, very unusual is going on there. So that isn't right, is it? It should be something like 1.8 or 2, I think. So we're going to try something unconventional and see if we can get the data to change on the screen. So what we'll do now, we'll do a bit of playing around. This is a default value usually when it's open circuit. This is the one we've got a problem with the gear position. This is why it won't, won't come out reverse. This is working, no fault code for shift gate. So what we'll do, let's disconnect this and see if we get that value. If we do, we know we've definitely got a knackered one. I've just actually measured this in the seven volts and it, it's only a five volt sensor. So you work that one out, it's a bit weird, right? It's probably just some, some erroneous value. It can't be seven volts if there's only a five volt supply in it. So there's something really weird going on with that. So what we'll do now, let's just unplug this one. If it goes to 1023, we know that, obviously when that's unplugged, that's the default value, then we know that this is basically goose. Right, so this is our good sensor. There's nothing wrong with this sensor. Right, so that should now go to 1023. Let's go back to me, a very messy work area. And let's see. And just like I thought, 1023. So we've got an open circuit on that, I'm guessing. Let's check the voltages now. There we are, we've got a five volt supply, but we knew that anyway. Then what we'll do, we'll check the ground. We've got a good ground. Something important now. This is the good sensor, the one we're just using for testing. The signal is 3.28 volts, which is absolutely spot on. But when we unplug it, we'll get a bigger value usually because the control unit will change. So let's just check that unplugged. And this is a good diagnostic test for the other sensor and I'll show you why. 8.8 .8 volts, nothing wrong with that. So if you plug this in and you still have 8.8 .8 volts, then there's a problem, isn't there? The sensor just doesn't do anything, right? If it drops back down to three volts, then the sensor's good. And this is a little simple test you can do, which if I can get the thing in, will do. I think I meant, uh, was I in the wrong one? No, I was in the right one, wasn't I? No, there we are. Okay. So, let's just double check that again. No idea with the camera floating around, but my glasses weren't that good, so sorry about that. So that's a good sensor. Eight unplugged, 3.2 plugged in. Let's do the same with our dodgy sensor. This is the knackered sensor. The one that I know now is definitely broken. And then we'll just try something cool. So let's just try this one now on the yellow wire and see if we get the same result. Yeah, 7.6. So in theory, unplugged, that would probably be quite okay. Let's plug it in. And I'll show you what I mean. And this is proof that the sensor is broken internally and it just it just isn't able to uh, to work. And that's why that signal is 1,000, that default value on Easter. Uh, let's plug that in. There we go, like that. There we go. Right, let's check that again. If we've got 7 point odd volts, then the sensor's broken. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So the sensor's damaged. So now what I'm going to do, obviously we have to take the gearbox out and change that sensor. Uh, I'm going to try something special and see if the live data changes to check the SMG gearbox. 
control unit. So to do that, I'm gonna disconnect that completely and I'm gonna power that up with about two and a half volts and see what happens. So if you remember, the position gear 1023, I think should be sort of in uh, even gears 200 and odd gears 800. I'm not sure about reverse. If it is, it is generally stuck in reverse. By applying voltage to this sensor wiring harness now, I'm hoping to change that and perhaps get the damn thing in friggin' neutral. What I have here is a variable voltage power supply and I'm gonna start on about one and a half, 1 1.4, something like that. And I've just got my power probe hooked up just to show you that it's basically mirroring the device. And this is very useful because we can now check the wiring all the way back to the SMG control unit just by altering the uh, signal with our variable voltage device in in a hope to get that uh, get that 1024 uh, sort of value lower important thing is obviously to keep it disconnected from the sensor which is shorted out and then we just plug that in and then we go back here and have a look at if our live data has changed and it has it's perfect that was a good guess it was 200 and something and now it's in 260 so essentially, there's nothing wrong with the wiring. In fact, we could probably change that a little bit now and keep going up and down and check. So the wiring's okay. The sensor's basically faulty. So let's just go up a bit, 1.4 volts. And let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, could, can you just gently just turn that voltage up for me, please? I just want to check this signal on the computer. Just put it up to 1.8 volts. Just turn that power supply up to 1.8 volts. Did you hear that noise then? Did you hear the um, hydraulic reservoir priming? That's because the, se the, se the sensor's broken on the gearbox. It's stuck in reverse. Now, what voltage are you on there? That's great. We keep it at that voltage, might be able to get it in neutral now. Are you with me? Might be able to get this into neutral now. I'll get on the step ladders. <laughs> Basically, it's the, there's two sensors on the, on the top of the gearbox. This one works. Can you hear it trying to move now? Mm. It's because it I'm ma manually manipulating the sensor. I might be able to get the damn thing in neutral now. And obviously, we have to drop the gearbox and change mm. the sensor. But I've proven that the wiring is okay and everything. And now you can hear the hydraulic accumulator primed. Well, it mm. wouldn't do it before because it's stuck in reverse, you see. Mm. Now we can hopefully get the damn engine started and get it off the ramp. Or keep it in neutral somehow, you know, if that's possible. Well, our lights are still on. <laughs> Let's get up the old step ladder, isn't it? God, this, this frigging ladder's absolutely rickety as buggery. I don't think it's made in Finland. <laughs> All the days when we worked on 6D5 CSIs, life was much more simple. Right? But we've got hydraulic pressure now, which to me is a a bonus. Jesus Christ, the bloody ladder we go. I'm actually going to physically try and get in this vehicle. Ladder's shaking like Billy on it. <sighs> right, I'm going to try and get in here and I'll resume filming. Well, I've no idea if this will do out, but we'll try our best. Wait to drive. You still want bloody going neutral. Is it? Still having none of it. So I'm really happy. So I'm really, really happy because that technique of using the voltage supply has actually um, ended up putting it in neutral now. So I'm really made up with that. So now we can just probably be able to start this engine in theory. I'll just give you a quick final look at what the situation was. So by using 1.9 volts from the variable voltage to supply, disconnecting the shift sensor and then erasing the faults. So I've managed to fuel the SMG control unit into thinking that there was no faults basically because it was actually locked in reverse. Now I've actually managed to get this thing in neutral. Now that means I might be able to start it. So this is the most useful tool <laughs> in my toolbox. Well, unfortunately, it won't start, and that's uh, okay because I've kind of got this dodgy um, voltage supply hooked up to my sensor. But the most important thing, what I'd be happy with now at ten past three on a on a Friday, is if I can get it off my ramp 
without using them skates and we can push it into the wash bay and order the sensor and be done with it. Um, because at least I've proven there's not wrong with uh, the wiring or the or the control unit and it's definitely the sensor. Could be an internal fault in gearbox, of course, as well. But I don't think so because it has definitely shifted in neutral. So the proof was in the pudding because there's no reverse lights on anymore. So obviously it's definitely not in neutral, in reverse, it's in neutral. So in my opinion, considering pushing the damn thing in from outside in the snow and all that business, I think I've done pretty goddamn good for what, two hours? And that two hours includes all that messing around outside, which was a nightmare. It's minus 10 now. Again, it's due for minus 30 this week, I reckon. So I'm glad I bought it in today rather than like next week when it's minus 30 because it would have been a well, it would have been easier on it, would have been more icy, it would have slid easier, but it was a friggin' nightmare that was. So let's see what happens when we get it on the wash bin and next week sometime we'll get a new sensor. And um we'll we'll catch up and we'll see we'll see a part two, make a part two video of this, I think. Right, good. I hope you liked it because I didn't like it, but I really enjoyed the diagnostic side, but I didn't enjoy the messing about. And this, this is a classic case of what a wiggle test will do. There you are. We're just touching the wiring there and it's going absolutely haywire. So the fault is a break inside this part of the wiring there. So that's that sensor diagnosed. This is the old one. We're not going to do that with the new one. But here's what it looks like with voltage applied. There's a fault code. There was a fault code for EEPROM faulty as well in the CPU. And the SMG control in it, but that doesn't mean anything. Just old crap, garbage technology. If you've got one of these, basically, rip it out, throw it in the bin, put a clutch pedal in, for the, and whatever, master cylinder, just put a normal gearbox in. Worst garbage ever made. I hate them. I've hated them for, for years and years, and every time they come, they give me an headache. The only thing that's almost as bad as this is those Renault Nissan robotized crap magnetic Morelli gearboxes. Funnily enough, it's got a lot of magnetic Morelli stuff on this and Denzo stuff. Anyway, let's check this out.